Hallelujah. Okay. Put my first scripture up on the board there if I could find it. There it is right there. Uh, <clears throat> let's go with First Peter and uh, chapter three, verse eighteen. We could start now. Boy, that's so true. How great is our God. Verse 18. <clears throat> You're close. All right, everybody look at the board. For Christ the Messiah himself died for sins once for all. The righteous for the unrighteous. Now we know that Christ was the righteous and we were the unrighteous. <clears throat> I said we were we were the unrighteous. Past tense. Past tense. The just for the unjust. Christ is the just. The innocent for the guilty. That he might bring us to God. That he might bring us to God. The Father. Now that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to make sure that we understand, not just in our minds, but to really experience being back with the Father. In your own lives, can you picture your own Father? Maybe good experience, maybe bad. Who would want to give a testimony of their own father tonight? Would it be good or bad? You want to give a testimony? Yeah. Huh? You guess? All right. Stand up here and give it to us. About my real my Is it good or bad? It's good. All right. Um my earthly father was always there for me, protected me. Um, he's the best man. I mean, really, until I met Pastor Bob, the best man I ever met in my life. He died when I was 14, but he was always protective and um, loving, nurturing. I mean, I remember when I wanted to be baptized, he was right there beside me. Um, I mean, that's what I think of my fa heavenly father. Good. And that's how I made it through this world, was replacing you know, before I knew my God, how God is my heavenly father, I had to think, well, you know, God put my earthly father on this earth. I don't know how, if that makes sense, right. to be my father. Okay. And that's how I made it through life before I became a Christian, is knowing that there was more out there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, my heavenly father is my father. If that, I don't know if I'm making sense. Right. That's good. That's good. Okay. Sorry, I get nervous when I cross. Okay. I should have took public speaking, right? <laughs> you know, uh, we talk about a father. Uh, you know, say, well, that's my father. But then the relationship is what we're after now. And do you feel like you had a right good relationship? Mm -hmm. You could talk to your father? For that age. I knew he died when I was 14. So, yes, for that age. For that age. For that age. And that yes. meant a lot to you. Yeah. I felt like my world had ended at the time because I Yeah. I had a relationship. I went to church and was baptized. I knew about God and Christ, but I don't believe I had the personal relationship with Jesus Christ that I do today. Yeah. So it was very devastating. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> if I would ask you tonight I'll share, I'll share my experience. I remember when I, when I really came to Christ, it was really a traumatic experience for me. I came into the Baptist church. I was 26 years old. I'm sitting there. I had no idea that I was really going to get saved that day. I thought I knew God. In my mind, I did. 
but in my heart was far from God, believe me. It's like when I think back on it, and I've been doing it for the last six months, thinking back on that day when I went up <clears throat> to the front and the pastor was behind the pulpit. It was like putting me down. It was like the Lord just carried me up there. And, you know, when you, when you experience uh, <clears throat> spiritual experiences, it's hard to put words to it. But as I look back on it, as I went up, there was a big change in me, a big change in me when I had that experience. And I knew the Lord Jesus as my personal Savior. And uh, that was on a Sunday. And then, of course, Monday, when I went back to church, I instantly began to witness. It was the most natural thing for me to share my experience with people at work at the air base. When I, and I was 26 years old. And people began to get saved just by my experience. And they, as Frank said, that we can see Christ in people. I can see Christ in every one of you tonight. Missy, I see Jesus in you, left and right. I really do. Now, I know, now for her, you know, it's like, are you kidding? <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. I see Jesus in you. Sunday, you were glowing. You're glowing and you're gl look at her glowing right now. It, look at that. She, it, huh? Every one of you got a glow about you. That's what Frank was talking about. But we want to we want to be able to touch the Father tonight, and so many times we <clears throat> we say thank God I'm saved and that's that's great. Then I remember when I met the Holy Spirit. I had a personal experience with the Holy Spirit. I was baptized in the Holy Ghost, but I had to, I had the Lord with me. I knew I had His Spirit with me. But there was a time in 1972 when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. I really begin to walk in the Spirit and begin to understand that there is a different plateau of people that walk in the Spirit and those that do not have that experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm not saying they're not saved. I'm just saying that there is a different plateau of knowing the Holy Spirit and being able to be used by Him. And then there was a day after, must have been four or five years after that, I really really met the Father. And it's hard to understand, and I'm breaking it down for you. There's no doubt in my mind that many of you know Jesus without a doubt. But Jesus saved you to bring you and me to the Father. Are you back with the Father yet? Just be honest with yourself. Are you having a relationship with the Father, or are you still standing afar off from the Father? Because of maybe your father did not have that fatherly image, but you testified that your father meant a lot to you and, has, and, and gave you somewhat of a stability in your teen years. Where I'm at, and this is God working in all of us, and you can't get there on your own power. But not only, I know we think about the physical sense that God or Christ is bringing us to the Father in a physical sense, but this is spiritual that I'm talking about now. That you have such a relationship with the Father that it, it stabilizes you like you've never known before. And it's due to Him working in us. Remember, it is God, God the Father, by His Holy Spirit, working in us, doing a work to bring us experimentally into the fellowshipping of the Father. The Bible says in the, in, the, in the Scriptures, it says that communion with the Holy Spirit in the Son and the Father. 
communion with all, the one God in the three distinct persons that he reveals himself to us. God the, God the <clears throat> Son, God the Holy Spirit, or God the Spirit, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. So I'm, I'm sort of challenging you tonight. And if you're, if you're there, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not there, you're probably, what is he talking about? If you're there, you'll say amen. <laughs> if you're not there, then, then I want to bring you in and get you to understand something that's so important. Now, let's look at the scripture again. Jesus did all of that. Look what he did. And why did he do it? That he might bring us to God. I want you to, does everybody see that? That he what? Might bring us to God the Father. Now, I know when we read scriptures, <coughs> how many read the scriptures? The lost coin in Luke 15. How many's ever read the lost coin? All right. How many's ever read about, uh, read about the shepherd and the sheep? The one sheep going, remember that, okay. How many about the prodigal son? Now in that story, it's like our eyes are on the lost coin. Our eyes are on the, <clears throat> the little sheep that's lost. Not on the shepherd. And our eyes are on the prodigal son, but not the father. Now think about the father. I'm talking about the Father. We rejoice that the, let's, go, let's talk about the young man that got his inheritance and he went off and you know the story as well as I do. And we rejoice that the son has come back home, don't we? But how many have, have we understood the joy in the Father's heart to have his son back with him? Okay. We rejoice when someone gets saved. But we haven't quite understood what that means to the Father. That means he has his son or his daughter back. And that's why Christ died. Yes, to cleanse us of all sin, board our sins on him, clean, cleaned us up, he gave us his righteousness and his holiness that we might be able to come to our holy father and be united with him once again. Do you see the picture? The father so desires each one of us. We are special in the Father's eyes. Now, I'm going to come back down to uh, me as an earthly father. I have three daughters. What have I got four fingers up here for? Put that three of them down, Bob. <laughs> I cannot explain to you how I love them. Who can I identify with me? Women, men, if you can, raise your hand. I want you to identify. I don't want people to sit in church and go out with a mental uh, knowledge of something and don't experience it. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Wow, he tastes pretty good. Taste and see. That's, that's personal experience. That's sitting down at the table and eating the food and you say, yummy, yummy, yum. You taste, you, you, you experienced it. Can you imagine the father's joy in having his lost son back? Okay, I need some volunteers. Rick, you stand up here, please, sir. How about being the father tonight? Rick's going to be right up here. Sit on the throne, son. The Father. That's the Father. Would you be Jesus tonight? Thank you. Uh, 
Let's stand up here, Jesus, with the Father. <clears throat> now, the Father's got a problem. He lost, he lost his family. See, he's a father. What is a father without a family? Did you know he adopted us? The father adopted us into his family? A father wants a family. The mothers don't want no family. <laughs> They're trying to get rid of their family. But the father wants a family. I'm just kidding, you know that. He wants a family. I, I want you to feel his heart. Feel God Almighty, who is your father, that he wants his family. But his family went AWOL. They went after other gods, other fathers. And so he talks with the son. He says to the son, tell him what you want the son to do. I want you to go back and redeem my family and make them friendly again to me. And? And? I will. All right. Come on. He comes down to the earth. He's born. He walks, 30, he walks 30 years, and then we got a surprise for him. <laughs> of course, he knew it all the time. He's going to die on this cross and redeem us all. So he dies on the cross. He sheds his blood. And the Bible says we are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. How many in here has ever hawked something in a, uh, what do they call these places? Huh? Pawn shop. Okay, how many's ever hawked something in a pawn shop? One, two, three. All right. And let's say, let's say that this thing you uh, hawked was the, the watch that your mother gave to you when you was 12 years old, let's say. But it, you got, when you took it in there, they give you $200 because it was a nice watch. So anyway, a year goes by. And you finally get enough money, and you go back, and you, they still got the watch, and you, gave them, and you give them the 200 or whatever else you have to give them. They get your money, and you got the watch back. You have just redeemed your watch using money. That's redemption. So he uses his blood to redeem. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Yes, we need to get rid of our sins. But why? Why don't God just let us go to hell? Why, why send his only begotten son to die on this cross and shed his blood? Now, I want to say something. There'll be no more nails in his hands anymore. There'll be no more nails in Jesus' hands anymore. There'll be no more thorns on his head. There'll be no more spear going in his side. There'll be no more nails in his feet. That's over. That's done. That's complete. Once and for all, he has paid the price. That's it. When Jesus comes back again, he's coming back as the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and he's going to land on Mount Olive, and he's going to settle this world situation. But in the meantime... Yes, he died for your sins, but he died for us to bring us back to the Father. Mary, would you step right up here? Jesus died on the cross, but you got all this sin, see. He cannot take you to the Father with all those sins. So he sheds his blood. You accept him as Lord and Savior. Every sin you ever committed, as far as the east is from the west, is going. You are holy. You are sanctified. You are clean. You can't get no cleaner. You can't get no more righteous. You can't get no more holiness. You, can't, you are ready for him to take you to the Father. Take it. Take it. To, no, you, there we go. All right. How about that? All right. You may be seated. Hallelujah. You're back with the Father, Mary. And Jesus was obedient. Amen. And he learned obedience by the things that he what? Suffered. All right, you may be seated. Thank you very much. Now, God has brought us back to the Father. But we got a little time down here 
before we actually go up there in person. Okay? But he's our Heavenly Father, so what he does, he has sent his spirit. Would you come up again, Mary? I hate to work you so hard tonight. But the Father has sent, and the Son went back up there where he could send his Holy Spirit to live in you. So God lives in your heart by his Spirit. And you don't have to pray for the power. Here's what you pray. Lord, I pray that the power that you put into me will manifest tonight in a mighty way, that it will move mightily in this service tonight. And I want to thank you now for that power that you've already put into me. I realize it is not of the vessel, but it is of God. And I thank you, Lord, that you are manifesting that power that's in me in this service tonight. And we're going to see people saved, healed, delivered, and set free. Amen. Oh, you may be seated. Now, every one of us has that power. See, we're going to have to learn to pray all over again. Now, there may be times when God will lead us that we might be a little low on gas. We might say, Lord, fill me up again. Okay? I'm not ruling that out. But normally, but normally, and we've all been through uh, Romans uh, Chapter 7, verse 14. You remember that in the scriptures? The things I want to do, I don't do. The things I, I, let's see, the things I don't want to do, I do. And the things I want to do, I don't do. And you remember that jumble jumble that you went through, you know, and I don't care to go back to there. I'm in, uh, I'm in Romans 8 in the spirit now, and I love it up here where I'm at. And and I see people struggling, and, and I understand that, and the struggle between the flesh and the spirit. And how many remember those days? You remember those years ago, those days you all struggled in that, but now that you're walking in the spirit, you don't have that struggle. You're sold out to God. The flesh has got to obey. The flesh don't dictate to me. I don't, I don't obey the flesh. You don't obey the flesh. You obey the spirit. Walk in the spirit and what? You will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So we walk. In, now, what happens if we make a mistake, Mary, and, and we let the flesh sort of have its way, uh, and we mess up, and you bark at somebody or say something you shouldn't have said? Uh, uh, what do you do? First John 1, 9. That, you better have it by now. First John 1, 9. That's right. Now, let's just say that uh, you really hurt the person's Feeling, so you need to go to the person and, and, tell, and tell her, tell her, like she, like. Please forgive me. I forgive <laughs> Now, wh wh why, why are you forgiving her? Because she asked me. All right. And if you don't, it. Huh? And God has forgiven me. Yeah. But suppose if you didn't forgive her, what would happen? What would God have to do? Turn you over to the jailers, <laughs> which are demon spirits. Not that God is mean. Okay, you need to understand that. But to teach you, because see, if we don't come with the easy, um, obedient way, then we'll have to come with the bit and bridle method. How many has ever done that? Yeah, I don't like that at all. So now I know that if I don't, now, you see, you mean God will turn me over to the jailers, the, the, the demon spirits? Listen, he has to honor his word. Now listen to me now. Now that we are brought back to the Father, we're saved, we're going to heaven. Now we have to learn to walk down here by principle of God's word. You know how to walk. You know how to talk. You know how to think. It's very simple. It is not complicated. And we have the Holy Spirit living within us now that directs us and guides us. Okay? So, now, certain sins, they talk about the spirit. In John, it talks about the spirit of death or the sin of death that brings death. What is he talking about? You know, the, 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 the sin of death. But if you go into the scriptures, you will see, see, God has put his laws, and it's up to us to walk according to his laws. Do we understand that? 
It doesn't mean he don't love us. It means he loves us. Now, this is the way you are to walk in the spirit. That's the way you are to walk. That way you'll, you'll keep safe. The devil will not get an advantage over you. Okay? So we learn to walk. We learn to talk. We learn to think like God thinks. We, get, we have the mind of Christ. Now, that takes a time. That's a process, which most of us have been in that process. But I want you to see it tonight that we've all been brought back to the Father. And I want you to be mindful of that because he wants that relationship to increase. Okay? Just like a husband and wife. Yeah, we're married. But what type of relationship do you have? Would you bring the board over here now? You two guys right there, just bring it over here. What type of relationship do you have? I have watched Frank and Linda over the years. I've known them, Frank, way back in the 70s. <coughs> And I've seen their relationship at its worst, and I've seen it at its best now. All of us, if we're honest, we have, boy, it's like zero. But then God works with us, unites us more with our mates. And we learn not to live the selfish life anymore, but we learn to live for others. And that's a transition that takes place by the Holy Spirit in our life. Now, we've talked about our position up here in Christ. That's our position. When we come to Christ, we're saved. I'm not trying to get saved. None of you are trying to get saved. You're saved. If you're saved, you can't get no more saved. If God has made you holy, you can't get no more holier. Now, our actions and our reactions and our doings that's a whole nother category do we understand that but we have been fully justified therefore we can come to the father anytime 24 7 regardless of where we're at and the door is open in fact i want to read that in um, <coughs> excuse me in hebrews 10 i think it is yeah just a minute, give me a little time. This is so powerful. Hebrews. Where are you at, Hebrews? There we go. All right, let's listen to this. This is powerful. Hmm. 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 Who took it out of this Bible? I wanted to know who did that. <clears throat> okay, let me quote it right now. It slipped my mind. You might find it for me about we can come to the throne. Not Hebrews 4, 16, but it's, I think it's Hebrews 10 or 9, somewhere right in there. 19, it's got a 19 verse to it. We can come right into the very presence of God now. Now, you've got to understand that is a privilege that for 4,000 years, man couldn't do that. Now, you've got to remember, if we were living back then, you could not have fellowship with the Father. Now, some of the prophets and some special people had somewhat of a dialogue with God, but I'm talking about not as a son and a father. Totally different relationship. Do we understand that? They had a different relationship back there. They could not go into the Holy of Holies. Who went into the Holy of Holies? The high priest. Once a year to take the sacrifice in there for his sins and for the sins of the people. But they, they would probably think, gosh, did he really put the blood on the, uh, on the mercy seat? 
I mean, they, were, they didn't have that intimate relationship with God Almighty. But today, through Jesus Christ and through the shed blood of Christ, we are clean. And we can come right into the presence of God with confidence and with boldness and say, Abba, Father. Powerful. Now, what the devil will try to do by his tactics, <coughs> excuse me, by his tactics, thank you, by his tactics, keep you from the throne. But look what it says. Let us. Now, let us. Let us. You mean there's lettuce in the, in the Bible? There's lettuce in the Bible? It says let us. Let us fear, fearfully and confidently, notice this, and boldly draw near to the throne of grace. Wow. Now let's be honest. Let's identify some of our, our feeling rim here. If you're down, way down here, are you scared to go to the throne? Or you don't feel like you're worthy? Have you ever experienced that you, you felt like, I'm not really worthy? You need to know the Father better. You need to know the power of the blood better. Okay, I'm not scolding nobody. I've been there, okay. Well, I didn't do too good today. I had a bad day, so I better not go to, I better not go to the Father because he might, he might spank me. No. See, if you learn the Father... That it was the father that ran to the prodigal son. Ran to the, greet the prodigal son. And kissed him. And brought him back. When you were saved, he ran to you, Mary. And took you in his arms. And said, my daughter is back. Going to put a robe on her. Brand new sandals. A nice ring. Kill the fattest calf. We are going to have a party. I've heard, you've heard this. The angels in heaven rejoice over one lost soul that's saved. And that's true. But why are they rejoicing? Now I'm giving you a whole new plateau of thinking. Yes, he was lost. But the father has gained his son back. Come on now. The Father has gained his son back. Jesus has brought the son in, and the angels are rejoicing, yes, over the lost soul, but over the fact that the Father has their son and daughter back. Can you grab that? All right. I need an illustration. Spencer, would you mind going way over the by the wall? Randy, stand right here. Now, he's been away. We gave him his share of the money. I want you to feel the Father's heart. Just check and see if it's beaten. <clears throat> but I want you to feel the Father's heart. He gave the son the money. Somebody tell me how you think he felt. Horrible. Bad. I want you to see the picture. Why did he just let the son go? Wisdom. Well, I guess you got to learn the hard way, son. The, the bit and bridle way. way. Okay. But you don't have to learn that way. Yes, he did, and he did. But the Father sent out the Holy Spirit and was working with him all along, even though he's sitting on the throne. And he comes to his senses. And he comes back, he says, 
the servants in my, or the slaves in my father's house eat better than this. I mean, he's in the hog pen now. All of his money is gone. And by the way, when your money goes, your friends go. Your real friends will stay, stay with you, money or no money. All right, so you're coming up. Just come up now. Easy does it. All right, stop out right there. Are right, you seeing? You're out on the front porch. You're rocking. What are you going to do? I'm going to get up and take a couple steps. Come on, run, boy, run. The father ran. <laughs> ran, ran, and kissed him. <laughs> Called the servants up. Get the fattest calf. We're going to party tonight. <laughs> and then, of course, the oldest son. You remember that? He was there with the father 24-7, worked, was faithful. But I don't think, and correct me if I'm wrong, that he really had an infant, 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 help me. Infinite. Very good. I appreciate that. Everybody at one time. Infinite. Thank you. With the father. With the father. You didn't kill a calf for me. I, I've been obedient. I did this and I've done. You know, it's so easy to have that attitude of the oldest son. I'm talking to Bob, too. Believe me, I'm talking to Bob. Stay out of trouble here, Bob. Okay. He had a bad attitude, didn't he? How many read, read, read in Luke 15? Dad, you never killed a calf for me. Son, everything I have is yours. People are sitting in church don't realize that everything the Father has is theirs. You're heir and co-heir with Jesus Christ, but it's like it don't comprehend that you have an inheritance in heaven that's kept for you that will last throughout eternities of eternities of eternities of eternities. Will this inheritance see you throughout eternities of eternities? And we get all caught up with about five minutes down here. If you compare this little uh, 65 or 70 years down here, compare that with eternity. Mary, we out of here. We closer to home. We closer to the Father's house. Let's stop by and see what Dad's got on the table. Nothing you can do or I can do to make God love you any better than he does right now. War's over. But the devil will make you think. Because maybe you're measuring yourself by the standards of the world that if you drive a Cadillac and you have a big house, you have all this money, you are successful. I'm not kicking that. My name is Jimmy and I will take all you give me. But that ain't why you're successful. You are successful, successful because God has made you kings. And you will rule with him throughout eternity. And the treasure that you have in your mortal body right now is greater than all the treasure and the gold in Fort Knox. That can't touch what you got. That cannot touch what you and me got. We are talking about eternal wealth. We are talking about the Shekinah glory presence. I have been in a degree of the Shekinah glory. And you don't want to get off the floor. You don't want to lift your head. If you could put your nose through the carpet, through the, through the floor. Frank and me has been down here. We prayed for five years, seven days a week, every night for five years or longer. And there's times we wanted to dig a hole. The presence of God was so strong. We wanted to dig a hole. I don't know why that happens. Because the glory is so great. 
But when we come to realize that God has done a work, and if you read through the scriptures, it's not what we are doing, it's what he has done. We need to understand that and walk with him and love him and adore him and whatever he tells you to do, do it and be faithful. And many of you, you are faithful. Cleaning this building is just as honorable as somebody teaching or preaching up here. God will reward those that are cutting the grass out there, those that are on the PA system and all the other things that we all do. And, you know, and that's good. But, buddy, it ain't what we do, it's what he's done. And he has made us what we are. And we are a king, we are the children of God. We've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness. We've been translated into the kingdom of the Son of God. God Almighty is our Heavenly Father. And we can go. We can go fearlessly, confidently, and boldly. We could draw near to the throne. Who's sitting on the throne? God, your Heavenly Father, sitting on the throne. The throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners, that we may receive mercy for our failures. See, there's time, even though we're righteous, even though that we are holy, we have certain failures. Well, I do, you don't, right? <laughs> receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time. For every need, appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when we need it. How many times uh, Susan would say, Daddy, what are we going to do? I don't know, but when God tells me, we're going to do it. Well, you know, so-and-so said they want this. They, I, I, that's great. But God ain't told me. When God tells me, we'll do it. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? And until he speaks, I just keep on doing what I'm going to do. I keep my relationship with him, love him, praise God. The other day I was driving from my office and uh, coming down here, and there were one, two, three, four, five people out on my lawn, right in the front yard. They were right in my lawn, right out there. And so I got my machete. <laughs> Trespassers, hey? no. See, when God does the work in you, opportunity. They own my property. Hallelujah. The Lord and me is going to have a good time. I drove up there, introduced myself to them. I said, do you all know that God loves you? Do you know that God sent his son to die for you at Calvary? And they all looked at me. They were Navy people from these apartments over there. Of course, I had my ammunition. I had my tracks ready. And I gave each one of them a track. I said, listen, you read this. This will bless your socks off. Are you all enjoying yourself in my yard? Oh, yeah, we appreciate it. Now, notice, 30 years ago, I got the gun. Come on. Opportunity. What are they hurting? Let them sit out there. And I said, now, do be careful with the... Uh, the copperheads, because they do come through this area. My wife got bit not too long ago. And, you know, they left. I'm just kidding. Opportunities. Opportunities to bless. Opportunities to, to bless. People come all out in here. I'm out in the woods. When they meet me, they're going to meet Jesus. Because Jesus lives in me big time. And I'm going to tell them about Jesus. Then I got a couple jokes I like to tell them too. <laughs> Clean jokes. See, you could feel threatened with that or you could see an opportunity. Someone says, I hope God will do something. Are you ready? He'll do it. You know what? He'll do it. And he's going to do it for every, through all of us. And we stand together. We fight the good fight together. We support one another. We pray one for another. We love one another. Each one of us has our job in the body, and we do it 
All because our Heavenly Father has sent His Son down here to die on that cross. And if we die right now, we know where we're going. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. And God gives us opportunities every day, giving out tracts, sharing Christ with people. I love to go to uh, Walmart. I look around, see somebody sitting on a, 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 sitting over there by themselves, and I go over and I sit by them. Nice day. Yeah. <laughs> hey, by the way, do you know Jesus as your personal <laughs> Savior? <laughs> Boy, they get by that. Well, I'm Catholic. Well, that's great. That's wonderful. I know you enjoy doing that, but do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? I was uh, in the um, Bible store yesterday or day before, I can't remember. And uh, this guy was in there. It reminded me of what Frank said. He was glowing. <laughs> he was glowing. I looked at him and I said, you know the Lord, don't you? He said, yeah. Do you? I said, yeah. And the first time I've ever had anybody ask me, what is Jesus doing? And I thought, I thought, well, you know, and I started, no, he said, no, no, what is Jesus doing in you? Huh? What is Jesus doing in you? Are you ready to answer? Lock the door. <laughs> I want to, but you need to stop and think. Is he making you more patient? Is he working in you to love the unlovely? <laughs> That's how you grow. Are you learning to have patience? <laughs> Do you have a rebellious child living around the corner or in your house? Do you have a grandchild that's always asking, Grand, I just need this one more hundred dollars and I'll pay you back next week. I said, honey, you're already 50 years behind. <laughs> if you think you don't know what I go through, that's all right, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. I can shell out a thousand just like I could five dollars and just be as free inside as I can be. Now, Susan may have to get a part time job, but I mean, you know. <laughs> Let's get back to the Father. Go home tonight. Get on your knees. Say, Father, I want to know you. I want to know you more infinitely. Infinitely. I want to know you more because he desires for you to know him. And see, when somebody comes to me and says, well, God said this or God said that, no, that's not my heavenly father. I know my heavenly father. I know his character. I know his deep love for me. I know his desires for me. I know he rejoices over me. Turn to Zephariah, Z, Z E P, Zephariah 317. Can y'all see the board? Not this one, but I mean the big, you can see the. Now, it's one thing for us to be excited about the Lord, and He is excited about us, or we, I mean, us being excited about Him. But he's excited about us. Look at that. The Lord your God is in the midst of you. Where's he at? In the midst of you. Right here. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. A mighty one, a Savior who saves, he will rejoice over you. Say, he will rejoice over me. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. He rejoices over you. He's not mad at nobody. He's not mad at you. He's not mad at me. He rejoices over us. Think of your own children, how you rejoice over them. Think of your grandchildren. Get that feeling. Get that identification inside of you, how you feel about 
other people and the love that you have for them and see if you can't match that with your love for God. Let God touch your emotions, your feeling rim. Let him touch the most inner parts of your being. Soak in his loves. Let him soak in you. Rejoices over you with joy. He will rest in silent satisfaction and in his love. He will be silent and make no mention of past sins or even recall them. He will exalt over you with singing. Wow. We may have to get some strongholds out. Zebariah 3.17. There is so much in the Bible about God's love. We are his beloved children. See, we, we said something Sunday about that. As we really understand how much he loves us, a lot of the bondages will go. Can, can we understand that? The fears, the anxieties, the worries. Will he leave me? No. I'll never leave you. I will never forsake you. I am with you always, even until the end of the age. Oh, we've had people leave us. We've had people desert us, but he'll never desert you. Someone say, where's the Lord? I feel like he's afar off. No, he's exactly where you left him. He hasn't moved. We move. He doesn't move. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Okay. Can you grasp how much he loves you tonight? Do you understand you don't have to improve one little bit to try to win his love? It's hard for us to understand that. Remember, while we were yet, what? Sinners kicking up our heels, he died for us. And now, how much more will he do for us now that we are his children? I've been down in my life to the last dollar. Susan and me have been. We get on our knees together. And we say, Lord, thou knoweth all. We bow before you. You are our heavenly father. Everybody say, God, God is my God. heavenly father. I don't know what experience you might have had with your Earthly Father, but forget it. Start over. Learn about your Heavenly Father. If something happens that you would go afar off and you start coming back, He will run to meet you. And we'll have party time again. But walk with Him. This old world is passing by quick. We only down here for a short while. Don't get it in your mind. You're going to spend eternity down here. You're not. This kingdom is not yours down here. This is the kingdom of the enemy, Satan himself. Now, one day, God's kingdom will come down on this earth, and we will rule and reign with him. But until then, our job is to walk with him each day, come to his throne, Receive the help and grace that you need and enjoy, enjoy the fellowship you have with me. I enjoy the fellowship I have with my wife. I enjoy just Susan and me. Rainy day outside. Pull the curtain. We open the Bible. The other day we read the book of Ruth. Boy, there's a lot about Ruth. Boabs. Just want to share this about, about that. When you read the Bible, you will find that all the trouble that Ruth had and Noemi had, Noemi had, and uh, Ruth's husband died, and of course, uh, 
Naomi's two sons died. That was horrible. But it was all to bring about that uh, Naomi, not Naomi, but Ruth would meet Moab and marry him. And guess who down the line, three or four generations down the line, guess who came forth? Anybody know? David. King David. Powerful. Sometimes you see all of the mess that you might be in, but God will work it, and you're in the chain to bring forth maybe another Billy Graham, maybe another, we don't know, a, a minister that will, God will use. And your life seems to be all scrambled up, and yet God will take it all and cause good to come out of it. He knows what he's doing. I love to read those Old Testament stories and see the mess that a lot of those people were in. The 12 sons of, 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 uh, of Jacob, they were ornery critters. Have you all read the Bible? But God has chosen you. God's chosen you. From the foundation of the world, God's chosen you. God's chosen you. God has chosen you. God's 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 chosen Frank. God's chosen Willie. God's chosen me. When? 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 Before the foundation of the world. Where at? In Ephesians. Read it. The first chapter. Foreordained. Chose us to be his child. And our job is we're going to be faithful to the Father. And we walk out there in the midst of this, uh, this lost generation. We're going to hold our heads up high and say no, no to the world of flesh and the devil. Because my heavenly father loves me and I love my heavenly father. And I may be in a little tough time down here a little bit. That's okay. That's nothing compared to the glory that is waiting for me in heaven. Christ will, in, uh, Christ will share his glory with us. The Bible says that. The glory that Christ, he will share it with every one of us. Don't get so earthly fixed in all of this stuff going around in the world. It's all passing away. We are the children of God. We are the church, the body of Christ. We've been called by God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, through his son, Jesus Christ. He did it. So remember when you walk out of here. All right, who needs prayer? Step right up. Uh, you can close her down. Anybody need